A Noodlers, it is Paul Romero with the Seller House Wholesale Real Estate Training, uh, Wholesale Real Estate Investing, number 170 in the series, number 171 in the series. New update was 170. Today is Wisdom Wednesday on September 30th, the last day of the third quarter. Time to, holy cow, <laughs> only three months left in 2015 where does it go it's unbelievable it's so crazy it's so many plans from the beginning of the year pushed aside just by doing business and that's how people get locked into you know the rut of never really being able to advance and grow their business now we did make some strides but nowhere near what we had anticipated to have done at this point in time. So we've got three months left. It's time to really kick butt on creating some more of the systems that we really need to have in place to have this machine operating smoothly and at, a, at, you know, at the highest level that it possibly can. I mean, it is chugging along at a breakneck pace right now, but we're only in third gear. You know, we still got fourth gear to hit and then overdrive. So, you know, wherever you are in your business right now, look back. Now's a good time to take a quick look back to the beginning of the year and look at the plans that you had. What were, what were we, uh, you know, what were we expecting to have done? You know, what were we expecting to do? Where were we expecting to be? How much growth did we anticipate having between then and now? And figure out where and how you can you know apply the resources necessary to the areas required to start you know creating the systems that you need to fast track your business and this doesn't go just for wholesale real estate this pretty much goes for any kind of business out there no matter who you are what business you're in oh. excuse me <laughs> No matter who you are, what kind of business you're in, uh, this is the point in time where, as I said, you you you, you really want to get a grip on your situation where you are right now and start to put together some of the last minute things that you know as much as you possibly can. Because here's what happens: I, I've, I've noticed this over the past few years. We get going and most, you know, the mindset that hits right now going into the fourth quarter is, you know, maybe we're not where we wanted to be. We're lacking, you know, we're not making the sales that we need to be making. We're not closing the deals that we need to be closing. Um, you know, things are, you know, what's going wrong here? We need to step it up. We need to get, you know, bring in one and, and more and more focus goes on, you know, the doing part of what seems to be <laughs> that which will perpetuate more business and bring in more income because it's it is getting towards the end of the year and we start to want to focus on you know closing out the end of the year with a bang because you know quite honestly we kind of I mean we should all know by now that you know going into the holidays this being you know the end of September realistically we've got about a month and a half before you know america pretty much checks out once we get to once we get to uh once we actually hit thanksgiving you know and i mean the focus shifts to looking forward to christmas and the new year and everything else and 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 things really things really do slow down quite a bit so the big focus of you know, trying to get that last push, knowing that we're coming into, you know, maybe quote the slow season and, and all of those things, it's good. But at the same time, the part that gets overlooked and what I see happening a lot is roll is then, you know, once 2000 and whatever ends and you're rolling into the new year that, you know, January and February kind of struggle to get out of the gate because 
you know, you've pulled the train into the station and parked this thing and, uh, you know, everybody got off, including the conductor and, uh, and the, uh, and the, uh, and the, uh, and, the and the, and the coal shoveler. So to get this thing rolling back out of the station again, you know, everybody's got to get back on board. Everybody's got to get the, uh, you know, the, the coal shoveler's got to get the, 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 the fire stoked up again and it takes time to get this thing going. So not only does the end of the year have its own slowdown, I think it, ha it you know, carries a hangover period of, you know, f firing it back up and getting it rolling again in the new year. And obviously, especially in real estate, and I'm sure, you know, in pretty much every business as well, too, going into the new year, there's new changes, there's new uh, attitudes, there's new, you know, public perception, there's new view of the markets, there's new presidents, there's new, you know, projections, there's new, uh, you know, all these things going into a whole new outlook. And everybody is kind of starting off sluggish, kind of, you know, looking around, wondering, hey, what's going on? Um, you know, which direction should I be taking? Maybe I should slow down a little bit and keep going. So, you know, it's not just your own thing, but it's upcoming changes as well too, and people's perception and and um, their own hesitation to jump right in and get going, so to speak, that can really also affect, you know, how much business that you really do in January and February of the new year. So, looking forward to that and you know wanting to power out the, the 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 final quarter of this year spending a little bit of time looking forward anticipating what is coming down the pike what are the new things i can expect for next year now's a good time to really start as much as looking back to the beginning of 2015 and figuring out you know where you are and where you lack and what you really need to you know, pick a couple, two or three, maybe at the most, you know, really, you know, elements that were strongly felt needed at the beginning of the year that didn't quite happen and evaluate their, evaluate their relevancy. Now, you know, maybe something that you thought you needed to do in 2000, I mean, in January, you look at, you look at it now and it was a high priority then, but now, Maybe, you know, there's been a transition in your business in some way, shape or form, and that isn't necessarily as powerful as you thought it would be. And something else has stepped up towards the forefront, but, you know, figure out what the top two or three are and try to focus, try to put some focus at least on, you know, implementing at least one, if not two or three of the high priority things that didn't get taken care of in these first nine months. And then at the same time, you know, while you are actually out there having to, you know, continue doing, take some time as well, too, to look forward and think, you know, what is coming down the pipe? What sort of changes are going to affect this business? 2016 is coming. How do I need to be positioned properly, you know, to be able to charge into 2015 while everybody else, you know, so I can have this train fired up, the coal box hot and ready to go? drop this thing into gear and spin them wheels on out of the station while everybody else is kind of, you know, lollygagging just to get on the train and, and, and load the, and, you know, and, and, and just loading, loading up the, uh, the coal bin, let alone throwing any into the hot box yet, you know? So looking forward at all the factors that might, that might affect how your business is going to, um, you know, change in 2016 now, and doing some preparation to be ready for that and having, like I said, position yourself in a manner so that you can, like I said, just go screaming out of the, out of the station there is going to go a long way towards being able to, in 2016, avoid what you're looking back on in 2015 to figure out, you know, where you lacked and where you didn't succeed and the things that you didn't get done that you wanted to get done. Because if you can jump into the new year and go screaming out of the station, well, hey, all of a sudden now, you know, everything's going right. You don't have to sit there during the first few months and sort of 
you know, figure out again, you know, what are these changes now? You know, you're, you're, you're playing catch up all the time is what I'm getting at. And to, you know, to avoid playing catch up, number one, you got to get caught up. <laughs> That's the hard part. Uh, but you know what? Like I said, you know, looking back, maybe you don't have to catch up on everything. Maybe there's just a couple of things that you absolutely really need to get caught up in position, ready to go, so that coming into 2016, those still aren't dragging you down. They're not holding you back. You don't have to get those things caught up. So get you know a few of the important things caught up and then position yourself going into the next going into the next year to where okay I know I'm going to have these three things that are going to be completely caught up which is going to put a take a big burden off my shoulders which is then going to allow me to focus upon you know the next three things that are going to be you know the biggest have you know carry the biggest impact upon how this business operates and succeeds so now you're moving forward you're hitting you're hitting the ground running at 2016 with no catch up to do all right we're in position we're at the starting line we're not starting the marathon at the back of the pack we're starting the marathon you know at the start finish line so not you know not 5000 people back and that takes you you know it takes you 15 minutes just to get to the start finish line when everybody else is 15 minutes down the track does that make sense? So get yourself positioned at the start finish line right now. Take these next three months to do that. You know, get get that stuff caught up. Get that stuff that's going to drag you down, taken care of, handled, and in position so you can be, when the gun goes off, you can be at the starting line and be out front and just have to do some elbowing to get, you know, to find your space and not have to be stumbling over all, all the people in front of you or just standing around waiting going, I heard the gun, let's go, you know, the gun went off, come on, let's go, <laughs> you know, so that's what you want to kind of do at this, when, with this last quarter, I get it, I understand, you want to make that push, you know, hopefully you've got some resources, you've got some people uh, within your organization, your business, or whatever, leverage them, use them, now is the time for them to step up, okay, not for you to jump in there and do more, for you to actually, you know, get the other people within your organization or your business to step up in this last quarter and take the reins and do it on their own. They need to be doing it themselves so you don't have to, so that you can make sure that we get everything caught up and positioned properly and have everything lined up to go screaming out of the gate so that they, too, can achieve more success you got to understand this is not just about you nothing in this world is actually just about you even though up here in this thing right here you know that's where our mindset is you know we're always we're always tuned into the the radio station wiifm you know what's in it for me when in reality you know it should be more like what's in it for us and if you can make it about us and make it about the other people and look at how you can enhance the lives of the people around you, the people that are counting on you. You know, you're the one who owns the business. You're the one who runs the organization, whatever it is. The, all the people below you, they're counting on you. So this is not just for you, you know, to build a better business for you. You have to look down the line and say, okay, what can I do to make it better for them? And in doing so, you know, in, in making it better for those below you, it's obviously going to make it better for you. Because if you make it better for them, they're going to be happier. They're going to be more productive. They're going to be more involved in everything that they do, paying more attention, putting more focus into the detail, doing all the little things that you right now are thinking, I got to get in there and make sure all this stuff gets done. If you can get... If you can get the people below you inspired to take on all of the minutia of what their own position within the company or the organization is, then all of that time that you spend thinking and worrying about that minutia itself can leave your shoulders and give you the time to start focusing on 
some of the bigger, more important things that's going to allow everything to expand and grow and make everything better for everyone involved. Uh, 2015, there you go. A game plan for the fourth quarter. So what are some of the things that might affect us in 2016? I don't know. I, <laughs> I myself need to look at some of this stuff. Do we, uh, do we have a presidential election coming? Don't we? 2016? Time for, time for Barack to go and, and uh, Hillary to come in? Just my opinion, you know. Uh, the Republicans are putting up a big show. Looks great. Donald Trump is an interesting candidate fallen off the forefront of the uh, enticing, you know, follower followership. But, you know, is there too many of them out there? And is it still too soon for the Republicans to step back into position? I don't know. I think that there's a preset sort of system within which the two-party system works and it's not a conspiracy theory really i think it's actually a success theory to perpetuate the kind of master plan if you will of how and where to no offense but pull the wool over people's eyes and 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 accomplish what's best for the government and the people involved with the government and the, and the aristocracy of the world and the people who have the money, because quite honestly, you know, those are the influential people. And those are, you know, if 5% of the people control 95% of the money, why do we really give a crap about the 95%? You know, we want to take care of the 5% and make sure that they're still, you know, happy and healthy and, and taking care of us. And that's, you know, that's, that's not too far of a reach to, to get a grasp on. You know, it's not a conspiracy theory. It just makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you had, I don't even know what kind of thing to relate this to, but if you had a situation where you had, you know, a group of people, well, let's say within your business almost even. If you have, you know, five people within an organization of 25 people, that are doing all the work and making everything happen and bringing in all the business and closing all the sales. Don't it, it doesn't it just make sense that you're going to want to do and create do more things and create better things for those five people than the other 20. What are they really doing in your business and what do you really care about? You know what the heck they're doing. They're just taking up space, collecting a paycheck, filling enough of a void so that the five important people can really drive and succeed and grow your business you know <laughs> i mean that's kind of the way the whole thing works so is it really too far of a stretch to think that there's some sort of a master plan out there to perpetuate the you know the 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 the, the, the growth and the expansion and, and the availability to accumulate even more money for the five percent of the people who have all the money already and not really give a crap about the other 95 percent and but 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 at the same time, you know, we can't, you know, we can't, uh, you know, upset the apple cart here. So we have to, you know, cloak the vision of what the 95% is seeing so that their perception of what's going on is beneficial to them. You know, I mean, you don't want that. You don't want, you don't, you know, you certainly don't want those 20 people that really aren't doing any of the productive work in your organization to, you know, catch wind of the fact that those who are, you know, are, are making great advances and, and, and getting all the bonuses and, 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 and all of that kind of thing, and they're being left out in the cold. So you want to make this, build this perception of, you know, great achievement and potential ability for them to move forward. I don't see how that really is any different than you know, what goes on in the world and why, like I say, that's such a, a far reaching stretch of the imagination to seem palatable that, you know, the 95% of us out here who aren't in the elite of, you know, 
power and control and money in this on this planet that we are being you know duped so to speak to you know falsely believe and and, and be led down a trail that kind of goes nowhere you know gives us a little bit of success gives us a little bit of opportunity gives us a little bit of freedom gives us a little bit of money but in comparison i mean what is the median i mean what is a um somebody was saying that two hundred thousand dollars of annual salary puts you in the uh I think like the top 10% of earners, 200,000 a year. Now that's 200,000 a year is a good salary. I would definitely be, you know, in a very solid position in life right now with $200,000 annually in salary, you know, in earnings and wages or whatnot. But the prop, but the, see, there's a problem with that. And the problem with that is, it's working income, it's earnings, it's wages. You have to continually be going out there spending your time in order to accumulate it. And with the and with the you know the system that we've all come to know and the status that we all you know strive to achieve and 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 you know our egos, so to speak, as we advance in life from $25,000 a year to $200,000 a year, We most people don't have a tendency to continue to live like they're only earning $25,000 a year for at least a period of time until they're earning, say, $70,000 a year, where they then bump themselves up to living, you know, a little bit more comfortably like they're earning, say, $40,000 a year. And then continue to stay there until they reach the level where they're earning, say, you know, one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year. You know, and they can bump themselves up to the level where they're, you know, living as though they're earning, say, you know, seventy or I mean, uh, eighty or you know, well, yeah, maybe seventy thousand dollars a year. You know, that's a nice thirty thousand dollar increase. That would be huge, you know, to most people. But what we tend to do instead of uh, doing that kind of a process and taking the difference and saving it and doing the right things with that money to create a future of financial freedom. And I don't mean retirement, not in the sense of what is perpetuated in the financial world today of, you know, saving your money over long term, putting it into these things that will grow your nest egg so that someday down the road in the future, you can live off of that nest eggs uh, the interest that that nest egg produces, that system, I'm sorry to tell you folks, died in 2018. Interest rates, look at where they're at, okay? Interest is gone. It's never coming back. Do the math. It can't. I mean, we owe over $18 trillion in this country to our debtors, to our, to our creditors out there. If we raise interest rates, you know, even 3%, we can't afford to pay our own bills and we bankrupt ourselves. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't make any sense. How can we do that? Interest isn't coming back. Building the nest egg for the future so that you can live off the interest that it produces is not the answer anymore. Cash flow is the only way to go to, re to actually achieve true financial freedom. You need money coming into your life that you're not working for, that you don't have to spend your time going out there having to earn it. That's the ticket. That's the piece to the puzzle that we weren't taught our whole lives. You know, when did you take cash flow 101 in college? You didn't. When did you, you know, when did you take, you know, three years to financial freedom in high school? You didn't. Those classes weren't offered. This education wasn't given. And your parents never taught you about it because, I mean, they don't have it, do they? If they had it and they knew about it, certainly they would have taught you about it. So they, they taught you everything they could know. Your teachers didn't teach you about it because they don't have it, do they? No, they taught you what they know, you know, and they did the best that they could. It's not really, quote, anybody's fault, 
it's a result of you know the educational system and the program and and, and where we've developed this ourselves i don't know about ourselves maybe from above how this has been developed over the years and what perception it puts into our mind on how to achieve success and quite honestly it's a new world it's never going to go back to what it was prior to the crash that's what people need to understand if you look back in history every time there's been a crash go back to the dot-com bubble okay <laughs> i mean that wasn't too long ago we can still all remember that right just go back to that look what was happening before that the internet was exploding and doing all these things and yada, and the dot com was huge and then it blew up and we've never gone back to that and we never will go back to that there's a different thing in the works for the internet that's coming down the line that is going to it's not going to really create a dot com bubble but it is going to get the uh, internet back onto the stock market scene that's for sure so but it's but it's not that it's something different and then you know, go back to the uh, go back to the for you guys a little older. Go back to the uh, you know the SNL debacle of the '80s. You know, look at what was happening prior to that, and look at what happened after that. The world changed. It never went back to what was happening before that. Go back to the Great Depression of, of, of 1935, and look where the world was going up until that, and then look at what happened afterwards. It never went back to that. We never go back. Nothing ever goes back, and. And, and, and we're never going back now, you know? It, it, that's not suddenly gonna change. We're not all of a sudden gonna stick this thing in reverse and go back. We're always gonna continue going forward and what was is no longer, period. That's, I mean, that's something that needs to be perpetuated in thought to you know, the, the, the people of America because the media right now, the perception of what's going on in the economy and in the and in the and in this country is that everything is going back to normal there's no normal there's no going back everything is changing and evolving in a different way going forward you know it's two directions <laughs> but anyway no everything is changing and evolving and, mo and moving forward and you can't sit back here and wait and go, oh, it's almost like it used to be. It's coming back. We're getting so close to where it was. If I could just wait, you know, it, it, it's it, it's going to get back to like it was in 2005. It's never going to go back to like it was in 2005. Are you kidding me? Anyway, I don't know. Got off on a little bit of a tangent there. So... Getting back to the wholesale real estate, the end of the year, just looking at where we are, look forward, look forward, get some forward vision. Don't look at things as what they are right now, okay? Even if you are making $200,000 a year and you're in the top you know, 10 or 20%, I forget what the statistic was, of, of earners in this country, look forward, okay? Five years from now, 10 years from now, is two hundred thousand dollars enough? Is that plenty for you to see forward or down the line? I don't know. Catch up. What's catch up? What's lacking? You know, here we are at the end of the at the end of the year. We've only got three months left. Catch up. What you are you behind on? Get yourself positioned so that you can be at the starting line come two thousand and sixteen, and be ready to hit the ground running. Being you know, ahead of the curve, so to speak. See what's coming. Don't put your head down and just go, I got to do this. Keep your head up and look and see what's coming at you. Because if you keep your head down, you know, you're going to run into that wall that you're, you know, you're not seeing it right now, but it's out there and you're going to run right into it. You got your head up, you can see the wall coming, you can veer off to the right a little bit, get around that thing. <coughs> that's what we do here at Sell a House there. Uh, at sellahousearizona.com and uh, that's what we do within our property and newer system except for the cloaking of the people who don't count you know and blurring the vision and giving a false perception we don't do that part okay uh, it's all open it's all right 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 laid out plain and simple clear as day for everyone to see that there's opportunity here for whatever level of advancement and growth that you want to be involved with uh, in in the realm of wholesale real estate you know, you can take this opportunity 
and you can learn and build and grow yourself to the position of taking this off and doing it on your own in a very short period of time, way shorter than it took us, way shorter than it's going to take anybody who doesn't know about this business. Trust me, been there. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, or, you know, you might be the kind of person who comes into this organization and finds a niche within this organization, which we're planning, you know, we've got big plans for this organization. So there's a lot of future potential and growth availability right here within the organization. And you might find yourself a nice little niche in here that you just want to settle into and say, this is a great spot for me. I'd love to fit in right here. That's available as well too. But right now, the first thing you got to do is get started. You got to send that email. You got to say, I'm interested. I want to be a part of wholesale real estate. I don't know nothing about it. It doesn't matter. We don't care about that. That's not what this is about. This is all about learning and growing from not knowing nothing. There's too many people out there that don't know anything about this, that sounds super exciting to them. They'd really love to get involved with this, but they don't know how, when, or why, and they start learning stuff, and it's so much, and then they start thinking, I got to know more, and I got to know more, and they never get started. This is getting started. This is not, this is not, uh, this is not, here's everything you have to do. Go out and do it, and call me when you got a deal. This is, come here, here's some leads, let's go get a deal. And let's learn how you do this whole thing right out of the gate. Okay. With that, everybody, propertynoodlers at gmail.com. Send an email. We'll talk to you soon. We'll be back here on Freedom Friday where we'll have some more very um, interesting ideas and concepts about what it takes to be successful in wholesale real estate. Have a great day, all, and we'll see you back here on Freedom